Now, actually, I'm not crazy about that word Latin to describe this kind of music because it tells only part of the story. When we speak of Latin America, we are, of course, referring to the historical fact that these countries were conquered, settled, and exploited by invaders from Latin countries like Spain, or as in the case of Brazil, from Portugal. And that's why Spanish and Portuguese are still the official languages of our friends to the south of us. And those languages are called Latin languages because they developed from the old language of ancient Rome. But the Latin American spirit, which is our subject today, has other ancestors besides the Latin ones, at least as important. And they are, first of all, the Indians, the original inhabitants of those countries, and in some cases, very strong civilizations in themselves. And secondly, Africans, a tremendously important influence, at least as important as it is in our own country. And it's the mingling of these different ancestors, influences, and heritages which makes the Latin American spirit what it is, at any rate, in music. But we mustn't begin to think that all Latin American music is only chaka 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 dance music, not by a long shot. Our Latin neighbors have produced a very impressive number of serious symphonic composers who have succeeded in preserving the folk flavor of their own countries, while at the same time expanding their music into what we think of as universal art. That is music that has not only a nationalistic spirit, but the spirit of all mankind. Now, certainly the most admired of all these composers was the great Brazilian Villa Lobos, who died only three years ago, leaving many beautiful compositions. And we're now going to hear the most famous one, the Bacchianas Brasileiras number no. five. Now that's a mouthful of a title, but it's simple to understand. Bacchianas simply means pieces like Bach, the great German composer Bach. In other words, Bachian pieces, Bacchianas in, por in Portuguese. And Brasileiras means Brazilian, naturally. And number five means that he wrote almost a dozen different works using this title, of which this is the fifth. So there you have it, Bacchianas Brasileiras, number five. Now, what is Bach doing in Brazil? Well, that's just the point of this piece, and really the point of all the pieces Villalobos composed. He wanted to bring together his native folklore elements with the great European musical tradition and unify them into a single style of his own, as he does in the very title of this piece, Bacchianas Brasileiras. And it's amazing how well he succeeded, as you will hear, especially in the first movement. There are two movements to this piece, which, by the way, is written for a soprano voice and an orchestra consisting of nothing but eight cellos. Now, in the first movement, which is slow and tender, he has the soprano sing a long melodic line without words, just the syllable ah. And underneath, the eight cellos accompany this Bachian song like one huge guitar. And then comes a short middle part that does have words in Portuguese about the moon. But then the singer goes back to the wordless Bachian melody, only this time, instead of singing ah, she hums it. Altogether, it makes a haunting an unforgettable atmosphere. Then comes the second movement, which is much more Brazilian than Bachian. It's a fast, gay tongue twister that does sound like a native folk dance. And now this difficult and fascinating work will be sung for us by the brilliant Israeli soprano, Netanya Davrat. <laughs> <laughs> 